how would you say urgent? Urgente. Good. Urgente. Urgente. How would you say urgently? Urgentemente. Urgentemente. I love you in Spanish is te quiero. Literally, I want you. You might have also heard te amo. You should be uh, weary of this difference. <laughs> te quiero you can use with friends. You can use with uh, lovers very soon. Te amo is much, much more serious. But uh, quiero is, uh, te quiero is very common. And it literally means I want you. So, te is you. We can get rid of this. And here we are left with I want. Quiero. Quiero. Good. How would you say I don't want? No quiero. No quiero. Good. We just put no before. One of my favorite rules for convertible words is the rule for words ending I-O-N. This is an extremely useful rule. Words ending I-O-N are the same in English and Spanish. Just in Spanish, they have the accent on the end. So, for example, in English, we have opinion. And in Spanish, you're going to pronounce syllable by syllable, making sure that you're pronouncing the vowels as they're written, and you're going to put the accent on the end. Opinión. Opinión. Good. Passion. Pasión. Pasión. Good. And you pronounce the S because we don't write sh. Preparation. Now, if it's shun, T-I-O-N, if we have shun, it's going to be C-I-O-N in Spanish. And this C-I-O-N is pronounced Sion, like an S, in most of the Spanish-speaking world. Or in most of Spain, it's pronounced Sion. So you can choose. If you have a particular affiliation for Spain, you can make this th. If not, I uh, suggest using the S sound, because a majority of Spanish speakers are using this sound. And it's also much easier. It doesn't appear difficult here. Preparación. But if you want to ask for a beer, for example, with the S sound, you're going to ask for a cerveza. If you're going to ask using the S sound, you're going to ask for cerveza. So I would I would suggest, unless you have a particular affiliation with Spain or you particularly want to be practicing with some Spanish friends or whatever, to use the S sound. So you have a word like organization. That Z, as well, is going to sound like an S or a S. Organización. So you see, much easier than this is organización. Organización. Good. Preparation. Preparación. Generation. Generación. 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 Good. You had a little bit slipping in from English, right? One of the vowels there. But if you take it syllable by syllable, we get every vowel perfect. Generación. Generación. Confirmation. Confirmación. Confirmación. I was tempted to say confirmación. Ah, but you thought, no, I like ink. Perfect. So these are, this is actually called language transfer. So this is negative language transfer. Things that come from English affecting your Spanish, which are not part of Spanish, are negative language transfer. And what is useful from English, so like these convertible words that we are uh, using, as far as language learning is concerned, this is positive language transfer. So part of our journey here is to identify what is negative language transfer and what is positive language transfer and using both to our advantage. And English becomes more interesting when we learn Spanish because we start to see where some words come from, where is the inherent wisdom in the vocabulary. So confirmation, for example, means with signing. Con is uh, with in Spanish and uh, firma is signature. So when you confirm, you are doing it with signature. Conversation. Conversación. Good. And this means uh, like with verses, with verse. Confrontation. Confrontación. Confrontación. And front, actually, like in frontación, comes from frente, which means forehead. So it's with the forehead. When you confront, you go forward with the forehead. Complication. Complicación. Complicación. Here, con is also con, but it changes to an M because of that P. Happens the same in English and Spanish, complicación. But this is with folding from Latin, plicare, to fold. So, you know, when you fold stuff up, I guess it gets more complicated, <laughs> something like that. Um, now, the reason why this is my favorite rule is because out of these words that end in I-O-N, if you take the words that end Asian, 
if you take those words and you get rid of the the shun and you put an r on the end you get the verb so let me give you an example preparation preparacion preparar and then you get the verb to prepare so there's like a thousand verbs now we know in spanish what was generation generacion good what is to generate generar generar good what was confirmation confirmacion confirmacion good what is to confirm confirmar yes confirmar so if you had to guess how do you think you would say to sign if to confirm is with oh, signing firmar with. yes firmar firmar means to sign ah huh? complication complicacion to complicate complicar good so now we can make some sentences with this what was again i want and if we forget that we can think of i love you in spanish and then take away the you quiero quiero so now we can make some sentences i want to prepare quiero pref- uh, quiero preparar good quiero preparar how do you say cooperation cooperación good cooperación good you pronounced both o's that was correct cooperación this sounds a tiny bit longer no cooperación to cooperate cooperar cooperar i want to cooperate quiero cooperar good how do you say cancellation cancelación and to cancel cancelar i want to cancel quiero cancelar Good. How do you think you would say, I don't want to cancel? No quiero cancelar. Perfect. Exploration. Exploración. To explore. Explorar. Good. I want to explore. Quiero explorar. Perfect. The word for me in Spanish is the same as English. You're just going to pronounce it how it's written. Me. Me. Good. How would you say, I want to prepare myself? Myself is the same as me. So you would say, I want to prepare me. Quiero prepararme. Good. Quiero prepararme. I want to prepare me. I want to prepare myself. And this means, I want to get ready. You can use this like, I want to get ready. Quiero prepararme. Now, this probably sounds quite formal in English. I want to prepare myself. But... We should be aware that in English, Latin words sound especially formal. Not always. Uh, Cancel doesn't sound formal because it's the only word we use to say cancel. But most of the time, we have two words with similar meanings. Like, for example, you might have to find and then to encounter, which sounds a little bit more formal or a little bit more literary or flowery. And these ones that have these different uh, feelings in English are generally Latin words. And the Germanic words like find, which in German is finden, same word, sound more everyday, colloquial. Now, we should bear in mind that that's in English and Latin words in Spanish, which is more than Latin, of course, don't sound formal. They just sound normal. 